It's, it's my worst favorite subject. It's your worst subject? Why? Because I'm not a fan of reading. And for lots of boys his age, reading is not the number one choice of things to do for fun. Sports. Video games. Probably playing sports. Sports and video games. Sports, I guess. And where does reading come in on that list, do you think? Fourth. It's not not to do list. It's on your not to do list? <coughs> Mm -hmm. Avoid reading at all costs. Yes, I tell my mom, my fam, my family this um, because uh, Xbox is more fun than reading. <laughs> mm. Reading, you get bored. Xbox, you don't. Reading has lots of competition. The fact is, by fourth grade, boy readers are way behind girls. The trend actually starts in second and third grade, and as the boys themselves tell it. Frustration is a big part of it. It's like, wait, wait, what happened? <laughs> Luke would just stop reading a book when it got too hard last year. And did that make you frustrated, make you want to stop reading a book? In fourth grade, yeah, a little bit. It just made me like, all right, well, if I don't know this word, then I can't even understand the rest of the book, so bye-bye, book. And that makes reading more of a chore for many boys. And all of us know how boys feel about chores. Yes, we, like, almost, like, Almost a hundred words in one page, like that. And that's a lot. Mm -hmm. And do you ever sometimes just say, I can't do this? And yes. Because, like, they don't, like, understand. They can't read the words that good, and they just think it's boring. Our culture is also a factor. By fourth grade, social pressures for boys can sometimes make reading seem not cool. Some people, like, want to be the cool people and, like, popular and, like, they think reading would be like school, and like some people don't like school. Maybe just to, because their friends stop reading or don't read, they think it's okay to stop reading too. So how do we keep boys in the game? Reading experts say we need to offer more boy-friendly books in an environment less structured. There's some magazines in there that they can't check out, like uh, some car and motorcycle magazines that they, they can only read when they're in there, so they like to go in there. Um, the comfy furniture doesn't hurt. Enter the cave. Anybody else read those where you, like, you choose what's going to happen to the characters in them? Sarah Shepard has been teaching for 15 years, most of that time fourth graders. She noticed the love of reading the second grade boys had would dramatically slip away by fourth grade. She headed to a new job in the library with a new plan inspired by other educators. We very carefully chose the books that we were going to put in there that would hopefully be books that would maybe hook the boys and get them reading. From graphic novels, some graphically gross with an emphasis on nose picking and bodily fluids, to biographies and other nonfiction materials that boys seem to relate more to. So why do you choose the graphic novels though? What it makes you read those? Comics. Awesome comics. Sarah is trying out a web-based literacy program for boys founded by author John Sheska. Her group is now part of the Guys Read Charter and yes, there are rules. They get to eat, so that helps. And it also says that they get to smash things. So I don't know if John Sheshka, that was his idea. So they're really looking forward to getting to smash things. They are also smashing the misconception that boys that don't like to read can't change. In fact, it's happened here over the past six months. I used to like not like reading that much, but then when I like got chosen, I started reading a lot more and it interests me like a lot more. It's more interesting to read. Like, my vocabulary is expanded, so I'm able to read, like, more books because, like, I understand, like, the, the hard, tough words that are, like, ten letters or, like, eight letters long. And they know reading is important beyond school. Most uh, in your life um, is mostly words and that, like, the only thing that doesn't have words is like a picture. But for right now, they are discovering for themselves that reading can be fun. And yes, even kind of cool. I like the nonfiction ones. That way I can learn about people. I like to read like fantasy books and, and books about science. Comic because they're funny and they're cool. Big Nate. Some books are funny and it like entertains me in ways. 
Next stop, the Harry Potter series. Luke says, uh, not so fast. Because, like, ten things are going on at the same time. If it's like a Harry Potter book, I'd probably do everything before I read a Harry Potter book. Well, maybe next year. Well, at every homecoming and memorial service, you see men and women in the background wearing leather jackets and patriotic patches. They are committed to being there, whether it's for one soldier or 100. And tonight, for the first time, the Patriot Guard riders talk about why they do what they do for all of our military families, their mission to ride. The bikes are loud. The riders are proud. And the leader of the pack is senior ride captain Eric Swanson. Just a bunch of guys that get together and uh, honor our veterans. But the Patriot Guard riders are much more than that. Eric signed up in 2005 when the first group was formed following protest at a military funeral in Kansas. A lot of us are Vietnam vets, so we came home and we've pretty much decided that that's not going to happen to our kids. Swanson was number 1912 nationwide. Today, there are more than 290,000, all dedicated to shielding families of fallen soldiers and showing respect for all service members coming home. Let's give them a big hand. And they come from all walks of life. We've got doctors, lawyers, uh, preachers. In fact, the QCA group has its own preacher, a pastor from Bluegrass. Jim Olson also signed on early and has been very busy ever since. When you see a uh, mission announced, you just have to be there. A huge commitment as our area is one of the most active in the country, second only to Arlington National Cemetery's unit. We average something every day and a half to two days. So 180 days a year we're doing something. And despite all they do, Jim, like all of the riders, try to stay out of the limelight. Uh, this is the first interview I've allowed. They do their talking with action, not words. And all I wanted to do when I joined was to stand a flag line. And yet I've had the opportunity to do so much more. Ronnie Osi is not a veteran, but has found this to be his way to serve. I'm honored. Uh, I have the freedoms that I have because of all those veterans, whether they're a cook on a ship or, you know, in a, in a combat zone. I still have those freedoms, so I'm, I'm honored to be with them, and, and people thank me for my service, and I always tell them I'm not a vet, but I, it's an honor to me. All of them proud to be there at a family's most difficult moment or on a community's proudest day. It's very much pride in our, in our country. Um, to know that the people are there for our guys is pretty, pretty awesome. Um, we feel it, but sometimes we don't think anybody else does until we see the flags and the, the uh, firemen out there and all the big flags from the fire, uh, fire stations all the lined up, and it's just, it's wonderful. So when you see them in your rearview mirror or pulling up to a local restaurant for coffee after a hard day's work, know that behind the tough exterior, these bikers have a soft side. I've seen them cry. I've seen them laugh. Um, I've seen them joke. I, all sides of them, and it's pretty neat to see some of the biggest, strongest guys that you um, assume is going to be stoic and, and um, strong are usually the first ones to shed the tears. But you'll find no one stronger in defense of our troops. Any veteran that needs my help, I don't care if it's the shirt that I'm wearing, the last nickel in my pocket, they get it. Representing the part of all of us that longs to find our own way to join the mission to ride. There's a few of us that get to stand up, but there's a whole lot of people in the wings that are clapping and cheering, and uh, I think that's, that's pretty cool. I think everybody thinks they're pretty cool. Yeah, and tonight we clap for them and cheer for what they do behind the scenes for our families. It was really kind of overwhelming to see just how many events those folks are at. I mean, we, you see them all the time and you kind of 
don't realize how busy they are, and they're all volunteers. And they're always there, always answering the call. Yeah, yeah. it's great to Job see. Job well done. I'm joined now by Aiden, our kid reporter for KWQC and winner of our Saluting Grandpa essay contest. I know you did your homework before the big honor flight trip. Yes, I did. Were you ready, though? Yeah, I was ready. <laughs> it was it was tough, but I, I was definitely ready. I practiced that whole night. It was um. It was it was frustrating at sometimes if I messed up, but. I was definitely ready. Well, you're a working reporter, right? You had some yeah. work to do. But it was also an emotional day for you, as oh, you yes. said, you're thinking about your grandpa a lot. Yes. Um, when when I when we went when we came to the World War II memorial, I I thought about my grandpa and how if he was here, he, I would I would definitely ask him some questions about the war, and I would he would be my hero. And instead, you got to ask those questions to a lot of other veterans. And here is Aiden's Adventures. We're handing the microphone, the microphone over to Aiden, and we're going to sign out together, all right? So, in Moline, Amber O'Brien. Aiden Ristoff. You stand next to each other. I've got a picture, Aiden. All right. How's that? Ryan, Ryan nice to meet you. Thank you for your service. All right. <laughs> We're here at the National Air and Space Museum, and if you look behind me here, they had the new exhibit of the Discovery Space Shuttle. Then it was on to the monuments and memorials. First stop was the World War II Memorial. This is Leonard Wilson, and um, I'm gonna ask him a couple questions. Um, how do you like the memorial? I think it's beautiful. Are you having fun in Washington, D.C.? Sure am. That's great. What's your favorite part of the memorial? Over against the Iowa uh, spot, spot where they took my picture. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a good part of the memorial. What does it mean to be here? Well, it means a lot because there ain't many of us left. I stopped for a couple of minutes to think about my own grandpa. He served in World War II, but I had to get back to work as I got to the Korean War Memorial. That's where I met John and his friends. It's a lifetime. It's a great experience. I don't know, I don't like to talk about it. What is it like be coming here and seeing all the memorials? It is. Uh, you know, the word that you probably use is it's awesome. It's just totally awesome for for an old guy like me. It, it's it, there's no better word than awesome today. It's, it's just been an awesome day all day long. Everything's been perfect. The weather's perfect. The people are perfect. I, I've shaken so many hands. I, I just can't believe it. I've shaken hands with the kids that are probably two years old up to people that are 80 years old, just like I am. Thank you. What is it? What is it like coming here and seeing all of your friends? It's fun, you know. Uh, I can't say I have a lot of friends here, but except that they're friends from the, the things that I've done in my life, you know. But uh, it, it's a fun day to be with people that have the same experiences that I have had. Yes. Do you think all this is very emotional? Gosh, is it emotional? Yes, it's a, it's, it's total emotion, you know. Yeah, right. While they were missing their friends, they also made sure we knew how important it is to share these stories with kids. I think the uh, the importance is of of having Aiden here, the the younger kid here. What do you think that means? Well, I think it would mean a lot to him. It means a lot to us to know that kids are interested in what we've been through. So, yeah. In fact, uh, you know, you, you think in this day and age maybe the younger people don't care, but they do.
And when you came home, you saw a lot of other kids here celebrating too and here to welcome home our heroes. What was that like? Yeah, it was, it was really nice. When I walked through the line of people, there was hundreds of people there. It was, it was really emotional to the veterans. I, I could definitely tell they were, I saw a couple of them tearing up. It was, it was emotional for me because knowing that my grandpa would be thinking and watching down of all of this, it's just, it's really. Yeah.